So, you wanna make great cocktails at home? Well, I know just how you feel. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through 10 tips for getting started with home mixology. I'll also answer one of the most common questions for beginners. Is it true that owning a snow plow can make you a better mixologist? The answer may surprise you. So grab your shaker and your learning cap. Is that a thing? And we'll learn how to make some drinks. Welcome to Sip On It and Spin. That's our billog and vlog of great cocktail recipes and tips for making drinks at home. Much like my long hair, Sip On It and Spin exists largely due to a certain global pandemic. Oddly enough, our interest in making cocktails really escalated when we couldn't leave our house. So I'm gonna show you how you can get started and if you stick with us, your mixology game will evolve alongside ours. This is our drinking journey together. Well, I'm sure you're anxious to start. You're probably shouting at your screen right now, just get to the tips. Hashtag just the tips. So here are 10 tips for beginners in no particular order. Number six, how to measure. The easiest way to get started is to use a standard measure or jigger. In the US, one shot is one and a half ounces usually. So you can use that as a gauge of what is considered one drink and that will help you maintain control and avoid a potentially very painful next morning. Measuring in ounces will help you get your feet wet before you graduate to just blindly pouring stuff in a glass. If you're making large batches or pitchers for a party, you can measure using ratios instead, and at that point, any container will do. Number eight, shaking and stirring. Bond James Bond famously preferred his vodka martini shaken, not stirred. Various articles explain that this is actually not the best way to make a martini, and that 007 is drinking a clouded, diluted mess. So, how do you know when to shake and when to stir? Well, the purpose of both is to integrate the ingredients together and often to chill the drink as well. The prevailing wisdom seems to be that booze-forward drinks should be stirred. Martinis, old fashions, etc. Drinks with fruit juices, dairy, and other mixers should be shaken margaritas, cosmos, and so on. Stirring gently mixes the drink without creating air bubbles that cloud things up. It also keeps the ice from chipping and melting too fast, which would dilute your drink. Shaking, on the other hand, is much more effective at getting your drink ice cold, so there are some trade-offs. Okay, but how long do I do that for? A good rule of thumb is 10 seconds of vigorous shaking or 20 to 45 seconds of steady circular stirring. Number seven, muddling. How does one get the flavor out of their favorite berry, herb, or even herb? The answer, obviously, is to mercilessly crush it to tiny bits with a tiny club. That's right, muddling is smashing with something like this or this. For citrus, you'll want to press firmly to get the juice and also oils out of the peel. Something like this is perfect for that. There is such a thing as too much muddling, particularly with delicate herbs, where if you crush it or shred it too much, you could release some bitter chlorophyll into your drink. So a smooth surface, something like this or this, is better for that. Number three, experiment. We want you to play with your booze. Try a variety of different styles and brands. Often you can find little samples like this so you don't have to commit to a whole bottle. A fun thing to do is a little blind taste test with friends. Have someone pour samples and then number them for reference later. You'll be more objective if you don't know what you're trying. And you might be surprised what you and others prefer. The most expensive bottle is not always the best bottle. The thing to remember is that tastes are different and good is objective. No matter what anybody else says, if you like it, it is good. Just like food, one of the most fun things about cocktails is the endless variety. You can play with styles, brands, pairing with different ingredients and different ratios for different palettes. Something you thought was perfection one day might land flat the next. Your experience of a drink can be colored by a number of factors, including the age or intensity of ingredients, the preparation, or the food that you eat. Even your mood can be a factor. So be open to trying different things and adjusting your approach over time. You'll learn what you like and become a mixology guru. Number 10, leverage the blog. Is this tip gonna be a shameless promotion? Yes, but we have a good reason. One of the main reasons we made the blog is to create a resource that we wish we had when we started. 
So browse the site, find something you like, and give it a try. It's optimized for your phone for Mixology on the go. I recommend you pull it up on your tablet or iPad for easy reference as you mix. You mean iPad? Number four, get fresh. Use fresh stuff, it's hot. When the recipe calls for lime juice, squeeze it out of a real lime, it's better. Need to muddle some mint or rosemary? The fresher the greater. You really should have a dedicated herb garden for your cocktails. Or just buy it at the store. That's good too. Number nine, keep it light, bro. Why so serious? It doesn't have to be perfect. If you need to loosen up, try having a drink before you make your drink. There's a lot of information and opinions out there about the right way to make certain drinks. It's good to take it in, but don't be overwhelmed by it. Your measurements don't need to be absolutely precise. It's all about finding the right balance for your taste and your guests tastes. Balance in all things. Namaste. It's namaste. Number two, second opinions. Collabs are fabs. It didn't work. Collaboration is fun. As you're making your own drinks or developing your own recipes, have others try it and give you feedback. Their palate might pick up on something you missed, or they may be able to tell you about something they think might be lacking. New perspectives may inspire you to try something different. So don't be too quick to discount your weird cousin's opinion just because he lost a sense of smell in that unfortunate stamp collecting incident. Number five, functional garnish. Sure, a nice lime wedge looks swell, but it also serves a purpose. When you're using fresh ingredients, and citrus in particular, the strength of the flavor can vary from fruit to fruit. Giving your guests a wedge will allow them to adjust the balance to their taste. Now that's not a hard rule for garnish. Uh, certainly a nice presentation can make a drink more enjoyable. Like a wheel, for example, looks very nice on a drink, but it's hard to get any juice out of there, so it's really more aesthetic than functional. Really what I'm saying is that your garnish can be more than just pretty. It can be functional. Edible straws technically counts. Number one, simple syrups. Many recipes call for simple syrup, which is just equal parts sugar and water. All you do is mix the sugar into the water until it fully dissolves. That's it, it's simple. However, it's also an opportunity to up your mixology game because you can infuse your syrup with a variety of different flavors. In fact, it's been one of our favorite areas to experiment in, and I feel, has really elevated our recipes. More often than not, we'll just boil our sugar and water with some other ingredient to pull that flavor into the syrup. Uh, mint, cinnamon, rosemary, oranges, uh, lots of other stuff. Go nuts. Nuts, maybe. Maybe. You can often use brown sugar to make your syrup richer, which is often our preference, depending on the drink. Well, those are our 10 tips in an admittedly confusing order, and that's a good place to start. There's a lot more to learn and many more cocktail adventures to have. I sure hope you'll join us on our journey, but I won't beg. Okay, please! So what can you expect from the blog and vlog? New recipes for one. Check the site often to see what we've been mixologizing lately. Once a week-ish, probably. We do have full-time jobs. Instructional videos. I'll walk you through how to make a number of cocktails in video form so you don't have to read any words. And we might even make a few friends along the way. Was that a wink? And one more thing before we wrap up. I promised you an answer to an important question for beginners. Is it true that owning a snowplow can make you a better mixologist? No, it's not. Well, that's it for now. We hope you found portions of this video useful because clearly a lot of it was not. We'll see you next time and happy mixology-ing. Thanks so much for watching, and if you like that, you should know that we have a plethora of similar cocktail recipes, videos, and some other nonsense at siponitandspin.com. So go check it out, it's a good time. In fact, I was about to head over there myself, so I will see you there.